willingness to let home here. I have fully loved this place and found out of you. I really feel like I am. I'm so thankful that the Lord has given me the opportunity to be here. I give honor to the leadership of Stan Wells, the Buckley's, the Rollinson's. Thank you so much for allowing me and inviting me to be a part of this event. I know that this is an inaugural event. And I know I speak for me and what the call for me and what the call for me. We are so honored to just be a part of this, to just stand with you in this moment and say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord is doing. Boy, God 
don't speak to Samuel. You can tell Samuel, Samuel, I've chosen to be a man. These are the exact words of God. The exact words of God are this. Samuel, I have chosen to be a man after my own heart. A man. Samuel would be surprised to learn that it was just a boy. But God saw the end game from the beginning. God always calls you to what you will be. He never calls you to where you are. God always sees the future. And he said, I've chosen me a man. Samuel goes to Jesse's home. I want to make a point here about when Samuel goes to Jesse's house. Samuel knows that if Saul knows that he's going to Jesse's home to anoint the king, that Saul will find him and kill him before he's able to do it. So the Lord tells Samuel, Samuel, tell the people that you are going to the house of Jesse to do a sacrifice. And the anointing will be covered up by the sacrifice. Under the cover of sacrifice, there will be an anointing. Because the sacrifice always covers the anointing. The sacrifice always protects the anointing. The anointing is under the umbrella of the sacrifice. If there is no sacrifice, there cannot be an anointing. There must be a sacrifice that covers the anointing. Every anointed person that you've ever seen, you can know this about them. There had to be a sacrifice in order for them to have the anointing. Samuel walks into the home says, Jesse, the Lord has sent me to anoint the king. Bring me his son. He begins to uh, shake the court over the head of Eliam, but there is no oil. The court doesn't pop. He shakes the head over Abinadab, but the court doesn't pop. He shakes the horn of oil over Shema, but the court doesn't pop. God says no, no. Seven times God will see that. Samuel says, uh, Jesse, either you are lying or God is lying. And my money's on you. Are here all thy sons? There's one. He's a keeper of the sheep. Samuel says, go get him. We will not sit down until he comes. David walks into the house and there are his brothers and his father. They're waiting. David doesn't know what's going on. I know when I was a teenager, if I would have walked into my house and my whole family was standing around waiting, the first thing I want to say was, who died? If nobody had died, the next thing I want to say, it wasn't me. Whatever y'all think I did, I didn't do it. Unless you got video, it wasn't me. But when he walks in the room, God, listen to me, God does not speak to David. God speaks to Samuel. That just helps somebody right there. God did not speak to David. David did not hear the voice of God. Samuel heard the voice of God. And God told Samuel, he's the one. Samuel walks over to David. He shakes the horn of oil over his head. And when he does, the cork pops. And the oil flows from the top of David's head to the sole of David's feet. And the Bible says David was anointed in the midst of his brethren. Eliam, Abinadab. Shema, they 
all watch David receive the oil. It's in his hair. It's on his clothes. It's in between his toes. A quart of oil. Do you know how much oil a quart of oil is? Let me help you. It's a lot. That's a lot of oil. The Bible says that Saul was anointed with a flask. But David was anointed with a horn. We don't anoint people like that today. Today is on down to you. That's all you need, brother. If every time you went up for prayer at your church, they poured a quart of oil on your head, no one would get prayed for. It ruined David's clothes. It was in his hair. The next day when David went out to watch the sheep, the oil became a nuisance. It attracted dust and dirt and flies. David was anointed. Listen, if you were in the same room as David, you knew he was anointed. You could smell him a mile away. Because when you become anointed, everybody around you knows something's different about this young man. Something different about this. And listen, if your friends cannot tell that you are different, you didn't get the right anointing. But when you really get anointed, everybody in your school is going to know you're anointed. Everybody in your family is going to know you're anointed. David is anointed. Here's what we know that David doesn't know. David's anointed to be king of Israel. And then a battle begins. The Philistines and Israel begin a battle. And they begin to fight. The Bible says every day they will fight. Listen, most people think that Israel was just hiding in the caves and the light was coming out. No, 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 no. it again. They had put the battle in array. They were fighting every day, but they were fighting regular men, regular people. Elia and Abinadab and Shema were fighting regular people. They were not afraid to fight a regular guy. But when a nine foot tall giant came out, they were like, we're not going to fight him. They were not afraid to fight. These men were not cowards. They had just never seen anybody that was nine foot tall. They didn't know how to handle that. They were not equipped and they were not anointed for the moment. They were not afraid to fight. They were just afraid to fight him. So when he would come out, they would go run and they would hide. They were terrified. They had never seen this before. They had never been in this kind of battle. They had never. They had never faced this kind of enemy. They were terrified. The battle is still ready. Forty days and forty nights, this this champion would come out and say, "Send me a man, and if he wins, then we'll serve you. If I win, you'll serve us." This is the challenge of the enemy. If I win, I want you to serve me. David is at home. I want you to, I'm laying a foundation right now. Come on somewhere. David is at home. He's watching the sheep. He's anointed. The oil is still tangible on his head. Still under the sleeping nails. His hair is still a little damp from the anointing. He was anointed. And his father calls him and he says, David, come here. I want you to take this charcuterie board, some bread and some cheese, some grapes. I want you to take this food to your room. Me? I'm going to. I'm the one with the anointing. I'm the 
I'm the one with the ministry. I'm the one with the gifting. I'm the one with the speed. I'm the one with the talent. Why do I need to serve? David said none of these things. David just said, yes, sir. I'm preaching right now. David was the one who had the anointing on him. But David was a servant. David said, whatever the Father wants me to do is what I will do. I'd rather be fighting with my brethren, but I'm at home watching the sheep. Even though I'm anointed, I'm still at home doing the chores. Even though I'm anointed, I'm still the one just working. Even though I'm the one that's anointed, I still serve the request of the Father. Take these cheeses, take these prayers, take them down to the battlefield, and check on your brothers. Can I just preach to you for a moment on this subject? How you show up matters. I said how you show up matters. Oh, hallelujah. Too many of us show up with a bad attitude. We are showing up with a sense of entitlement. We are showing up and we're telling everybody I'm this and I'm that and I should have this and I should have that. But when David showed up to the battlefield, David did not show up as a soldier. When David showed up to the battlefield, David showed up as a servant. I'm going to preach this thing whether you like it or whether you don't, doesn't matter. The Lord has sent me on assignment to tell you I know that we all see David as a soldier. But when David showed up to the Field. He did not show up as a soldier. When David showed up, David showed up as a servant. There was no sword in his hand. There was no spear in his hand. And there was no sling in his hand. He had cheese and bread. Here. Can I serve? You will serve my gods. David serving. He 
serving cheese and bread. And you listen to what's going on. And he's looking around. And all that oil that was on his head starts working on his heart. He said, what am I hearing? What is this? They said, oh, this is the life. He's the champion of the Philistines. David said, what's what David said? David says this, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? <laughs> this is very important. Don't miss this. This is very important because in the chapter before, Samuel would tell us about Goliath. And this is the first physical attribute that Samuel would write down about Goliath. The first thing that Samuel noticed about Goliath was this. His height was. When Samuel saw Goliath, Samuel saw Goliath's greatest strength. He's tall. But when David saw Goliath, his first physical attribute was he's uncircumcised. When Samuel saw Goliath, Samuel saw his greatest strength. But when David saw Goliath, he saw his greatest weakness. Samuel said, he's tall. David said, he's not in covenant.
you serve. Yes, if you yes, would serve yes. your brothers, you would not hate them. Yes. When David, when, when Joseph cleaned his face and showed his brothers who he was, the reason that, David, that Joseph could not repay his brothers for the evil that they did to him was because at that moment, Joseph was serving his brothers. And you cannot hate the people that God has called you to serve. Why is it that we can love people in the world better than we can love people on the same view as us? <laughs> yes. We gotta get back to a servant's heart. We gotta get back to a servant's heart. We gotta say, Lord, make me a servant in the house of the Lord. This is my name and say, Lord, if you can just make me a doorkeeper and just make me a servant, that'll be great. Because just one day in the house of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. 